Coming up on Nightline, honouring the Anzacs on the streets of Australia and on the slopes of Gallipoli. As well, the surrender of Tariq Aziz. That's next. From National 9 News, this is Nightline with Georgie Gardner. Australians honour the Anzac tradition with parades across our nation and on the slopes of Gallipoli. Good evening. Also in the news, the frontman for Saddam Hussein surrenders to coalition forces. It's been that day on the Australian calendar that begins with the bugles, then progresses through the long-remembered marching tunes along the streets of towns and cities, eventually reaching the clubs and pubs for the reunions of old mates. Damien Ryan has our report on Anzac Day across the nation. It may not be our national day, but honouring the Anzac legend takes pride of place on our calendar. And across the land, a proud and solemn tradition is maintained. From the nation's capital to other big cities and small towns, people sacrifice a few hours sleep to remember those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. In Sydney, 12,000 gathered for the dawn service. 88 years ago, nearly the same number of young Australians died at Gallipoli. It could have just faded off into history, but it hasn't. It's every year it just gets bigger and stronger, which I think is fantastic. It's the young who'll ensure the Anzac spirit will live on. At Adelaide's service, more than half the crowd were aged under 20. Likewise in Perth, a new generation embracing the past. Well, my brother, he's actually serving at the moment, so um, it, uh, it does give it added weight and does probably make it a little bit more emotional. And it was not long before emotion spilled out onto the streets. And for the first time, there is no living link to that landing on Anzac Cove. All the original Anzacs, 50,000 and more of them are gone. And all but eight of the 300,000 who served in World War I have died. At 104, Marcel Coe was the only one on parade today in Sydney. Do you feel like a hero, Marcel? Oh, no. No such thing as heroes. In Brisbane, another veteran, Ted Smout, defied frail health to back up yet again. We <laughs> love him. Look at him. He's so cute. <laughs> But Tasmania's last surviving digger, Frank McDonnell, stayed away. The 106-year-old nursing home resident sees little point in commemorating the Gallipoli campaign. It's no different to any other day. It just marks a day when they landed on Gallipoli. <coughs> failure. I don't like failures. Whatever the view, the legacy and the spirit remain strong and vigorous. National pride bristling. More than 30,000 marched in Sydney and like at dawn, the ranks were swollen by the young. All those people who fought in World War One and II and at the moment we're in Iraq. In Canberra, Prime Minister Howard also used the occasion to remember those in the Gulf. They went in our name in a just cause to do good things to liberate a people. They are part of a great tradition. And while the war may be over, our servicemen and women in the Middle East remain on active duty. Today, they also pause for a moment. There were ceremonies at sea on board HMAS Canimbla. The persons of us, your servants, and the fleet in which we serve. And at the coalition's headquarters in Qatar. Back home, our ageing war veterans were left weary by the long day another sacrifice so a nation can be left bursting with pride. Damien Ryan for Nightline. At Gallipoli, where the legend was born, thousands of Australians and New Zealanders made the pilgrimage for the dawn service.